Ah, yes, the esteemed Virgin-produced studio, who will go on to bring you classic films like The Space Between Us, That Awkward Moment, and Machine Gun Preacher. What I'm saying is you're about to watch the very peak of this company. This turns out to be the Russian mobsters banging on a locked door, but as of now, I feel like the movie's trying to jump scare me with the credits. And movie can kiss my balls. Obviously, I miscalculated a few things. Blank screen narration. Jeez, movie. If you're gonna narrate me right off the bat, at least give me some visual lubrication while it's happening. My neighbor he must have opened his door to complain. So they chased him all the way back to the back window of his apartment before shooting him. Seems like that little touch was purely for the audience. I do have to say, this zoom effect is cool and all, but this two full minutes of opening titles is worse than the nonsense TV shows do during the theme song. Ha! Can you imagine a limitless TV show? As if. Also, hang on. We've one-shotted from Eddie's perspective on the building, then through the cab line in Manhattan, then to Times Square, then into a pixel in the screen, then into some amoebic cell that lives inside the pixel, then into its nerve cell, then through some sort of rift in space-time that brings us back to an aerial view of f***ing Manhattan? The hell? Is the movie saying that another version of Manhattan actually lives within one pixel of a giant screen in Times Square? Because I don't think this is the type of flick prepared to answer those existential questions of that reality. What kind of guy without a drug or alcohol problem looks this way? Only a writer. That's me -ist. Man, didn't he just say that he didn't have an alcohol problem? In the last 60 seconds, he's pounded more booze than Jackson Maine. At least I still had Lindy. Character in decline enumerates something important to them, only to immediately lose that thing cliche. You know, despite this movie, Home Alone 2, and the Bittersweet Symphony video's visuals, it is not common to get repeatedly slammed into by opposing walkers in a New York City crosswalk. Sure, you may inadvertently make a little contact, but this shit right here makes Eddie look like he's being initiated into the stone cutters. The lower bunk in my childhood bedroom in Jersey. There's so much narration in this movie, I I bet Bradley Cooper logged more VO files than he did for Rocket Raccoon in all four movies. Well, I suppose I can help you with that. Just this once. Wow, in the entirety of Manhattan, Eddie just happened to run into the one drug dealer that he already has a relationship with, and has access to the greatest drug in the history of drugdom. That's it. If Verna has access to this medication, why hasn't he used it? Sure, there's the don't get high on your own supply edict and everything, but he has to know that this is the drug to end all drugs. Sure, he later says that it works better if you're already smart, but this is the best version of himself? Because given what we've seen of him, that's pretty f***ing hard to believe. You know how they say that we can only access 20% of our brain? Whoever says that is dumb. I don't have the time or desire to go into it here, but it's been proven over and over again that we use 100% of our brain over most 24-hour periods, so the whole concept of this miracle drug is bull****. And we can stop watching the movie now, no? I didn't want to see anybody, especially not my landlord's nasty young wife. Tuesday. Look, enough! Have we checked all the cliché boxes for this talented but tortured writer character yet? Behind on the rent? Check. Day drinking problems? You bet. Broke yet still entitled? Yes, sir. Scraggly hair and monochromatic wardrobe but still dazzlingly handsome? Bingo! This movie's obsession with the physiological representation of what's happening with this drug make me feel like I'm stuck in anatomy class watching videos about the human body. Except not the good parts of the body. I was blind, but now I see. Sure, this montage of Eddie getting his superpowers from the pill popping is corny and hacky, but at least it's not loose. Since this pull-away effect goes on for some time, and goes on for some time several more times, let's just add 15 sins for a movie that could have been about 20 minutes shorter if its visual effects crew wasn't up its own ass. She didn't okay, have so a chance. What? To what? Holy <laughs> To resist his charms? And also, the first thing dude does after realizing how smart the pill makes him is a rando that lives in the building? Who's married? I know guys are chauvinistic assholes and stuff, but this is an insane leap for this character to take. Remember how George Costanza got smarter when he stopped having sex, then realized he didn't need it anymore? That's the that should be happening here. I suddenly have all-seeing, all-knowing super brain powers, and thus I will spend a large chunk of however long I have left on this drug washing my dishes. I wasn't wired, just clear. I knew what I needed to do and how to do it. So clear, I waited over six hours before remembering I need to work on the book project that's consumed my life for the last several months. Dude, this is 2011. No one with a functioning computer has this many CDs anymore. And am I writing this sin in 2019 while gazing wistfully at my own absurdly large collection? You bet your ass I am. I see your spec and I raise you a plank. Wait, why the hell would Vernon put his home address on his business card? It's like this that prompt your business partners to show up and bash your face in. Anything I could do to get my hands on that little clear pill that would bring back enhanced Eddie. Could they lay on the Viagra metaphor any thicker in this movie? Remember, if narrations last for more than four hours, please consult a physician. Man, this struggle sure looked like it made a lot of noise, eh? And they ended up shooting his ass. And this is a pretty crowded f***ing apartment building. But yet no one called this into the police? 
Hey! And one guess what they've been looking for. Okay, I know I've talked a lot about the stupid narration in this movie already, but I have to say one more thing. It's not just that it's constant and annoying, but it's also unhelpful. That statement gives us no new information and offers no character insight. It just treats the audience like idiots that need spoon-fed the things that are right in front of us. It's infuriating, and I'm throwing on an extra 30 cents so that I don't have to mention it again. If you ever cooked, I'd be dead too. Great call, but Vernon just asked him to pick up food for him one time, and he hasn't seen this asshole in years. How the hell would he know that he never cooked? And he's right! But even if you didn't cook, this is a terrible spot to hide your sh Hasn't he ever nonchalantly leaned against the oven button, or accidentally hit start on the oven while he's setting the timer? My point is that there are so many better f***ing places in this apartment, man. Something doesn't gel here. Write down your number. I may need to contact you later. Um, he was the sole witness at the scene of a gruesome murder. He has a bag full of drugs in the back of his pants, and rubber gloves in his pocket. And this is the extent of the questioning. They didn't even search his ass? I know things are busy at the NYPD, but damn. Whoa, this is your vision when you're on this drug? I don't care how smart it makes you. This shit is disorienting as hell. Okay, you're a creative, brilliant type that's just been given access to every part of your brain. So naturally, the first thing you do is get a haircut. A tablet a day, and what I could do with my day was limitless. Roll limits. I'm all in. Ah. Bullshit. Everyone knows you don't have to be smart to win at poker. This was great. Listen, I don't want to belabor the point here, but I simply don't understand why Eddie, who's been shown to be a talented but starving artist, would essentially treat this magical drug like it's f***ing boner juice. Sure, he's learning new languages, but that's apparently only in service of f***ing women. Lots and lots of minutes of a gorgeous man gleefully doing rich, dangerous, and dickish things in a sunny coastal European village. And it's not a Mission Impossible movie, so I couldn't give a sh Armed with Vern's last $800, I made 2000 in a day. That's a lot of money, sure, but Eddie is a goddamn super genius, and he turned 800 into 2000 Isn't that just a good night at a cash game of poker? Having said that, the exponential gains of playing the stock market as well as Eddie did would add up fast, right? If he turned 800 into 2000 in one day, that's a daily gain of 250%, meaning day two, his 2000 would become 5000 and day three, his 5000 would become 12500 On the eighth day, he'd make over $1.2 that day alone, and I didn't even need any mind Alice to figure that out. Also, the fact that Eddie's dumbass is so impatient leads to the totally unnecessary loan from the Russian gangster, when he could have just waited a couple days of this return instead of getting into debt. Why do I give you $100,000? I get the strong feeling that you're not somebody I want to disappoint. This works. You don't pay, you know what we do? I cut you at waist. Peel your skin up over your head and tie a knot in it. You don't die from this. You suffocate. What a hilariously obtuse threat. The amount of work needed to actually pull this off is extremely inefficient. And yeah, I guess he's just trying to rattle Eddie, but how stupid would you have to be to believe you'd suffocate before you died of the blood loss? Why did you ever put up with me? This is supposed to endear us to the character and be sort of a self-reflective moment, but seriously, why do we like this character? He was a self-loathing drain on society with zero prospects before the NZT, and since he started taking it, he's been nothing but an insufferable prick that's exploited his abilities for his own gain. I know the visuals and the ideas are cool in this movie, but the protagonist is and remains a real asshole. So, Eddie Mora, what's your secret? This movie waits 40 minutes to De Niro. The share prices aren't really based on how a company works, it's about how mass psychology works. I know Van Loon is hot but why is Eddie giving him all this intel? Even if he's holding something back, this is a massive divulgence of tactical secrets. Take a look at these companies, tell me what you think. Jesus Christ, of all the ways the Limitless movie about Limitless powers could go, we're mired in goddamn financial planning. CEO, a global force, maybe president. Time somebody shook up the free world and got things done. Damn it, movie, stop giving people ideas. A fight? Don't know how to fight, or do I? You don't. Sure, the movie will make it seem like watching Kung Fu when you were a kid will give you the skills, but is knowing something and doing something really the same thing? Wouldn't there be a physical aspect to this that the knowledge alone wouldn't cover? No one will be seated during the Eddie glitches his balls off, yet still finds a way to score with hot babes, even though he's reconciled with Lindy portion of the movie. Here in front of the hotel where a woman identified as Maria Winberg was found dead in her room last night. If there's a more played out form of exposition than news reports on TV at full volume in lobbies, I'd love to hear about it. News position is the new narration and this movie is double fisting us with both. Any ideas? What do you think? Hmm? There it is. You can always tell when De Niro's phoning in a performance by how many times he does a parody of the Robert De Niro face. Ah, my inverted metaphobia! I realized that there were other people who might know about NZT. Vernon's other clients. Really? You think? I'm pretty sure that might be something you would have considered during the last few weeks, when you've supposedly had 24-7 crystal clear thinking. Hello? Oh no, the trench coat guy that's been following Eddie for the last half of the movie. When you're surreptitiously tailing someone, it's important to wear the exact same outfit for easy identification. Go! Go! Man, New York City cab drivers from movies have to be sick of people jumping into their taxi and screaming at them randomly to drive away or follow that car in front of them. Eddie. Melissa. Oh, f 
fuck off. Sure, the movie's trying to scuzz Melissa up a little, but does she look that different from her past self that Eddie wouldn't even recognize her? Also, Eddie found out that someone's been tapping his phone right after he called Melissa to make this appointment, so why is no one here to follow them? My work rate increased as insanely overnight. If everyone in this movie has taken NZT and not a single one of them cured cancer, that's some bull right there. I couldn't concentrate on anything for longer than 10 minutes. I, uh, I missed deadlines, got lazy, and I haven't been the same since. And that's it. I mean, that's a real bummer, man, but you've just described 78% of the American workforce. I expected some more dramatic side effects to quitting the sh Just take some fish oil and magnesium, and you'll probably be right back to normal. This is aspirin. You sound good, huh? Apparently, discount Teddy KGB graduated from the Fantastic Four school of immediately interacting with potentially dangerous things. <laughs> Conk blocking. Also, that supply, man. How long has this timeline been? Since Eddie found the bag, which had maybe 100, 150 pills in it, he's written the rest of the book, dated countless women, flew abroad on that European vacation, started working out, learned all the different languages, came the stock market, got back together with Lindy, met up with Van Loon, and went through the time warp thingy, then crashed out today. That had to be like, what, a couple months at least, right? And at some point about midway, he mentioned that he'd been doubling up on the doses, so at best he had a six week supply. But there are still this many? There's someone following me. Why? No one's been following Lindy before now, and she just went back to her own house, so it's not like she was acting suspiciously. Oh god. Jesus, discount Peter Stormare sucks at following people. He's always dressed the same, he's way too close to his mark, and he absolutely blows at running. Lindy's wearing high f***ing heels and is easily outpacing this asshole. Yo buddy, let's leave her alone. Come on. Oh. What are you doing, man? The movie's basically saying, sure, Lindy got these poor bastards killed, but they were fat New Yorkers walking in the park, so it's how they would have wanted to go. He's got a knife. Eddie, I can't think my way out of a knife. Damn straight, MC Dusk would be excellent at cinema sins. This is a surprisingly tense scene, but it also presupposes that the henchcoat knows Lindy didn't continue into the very convenient crowd at the ice rink, or any of the dozens of other routes she could have taken since the last time he saw her. Okay, she's on super drugs, that could maybe help, but he doesn't slip up on the f***ing ice once? <laughs> she takes a genius pill and realizes her best shot at escape is brandishing a six-year-old with skates as a weapon. <laughs> Wait, is this movie a comedy? It's gonna be okay. This movie's message is, hey, drugs are good. Unless they're bad. But really, they're mostly good. Do drugs. Wait, Kennedy followed them to the hotel and knew exactly which room they were staying in? I mean, they left from Lindy's office, so it's not like this is a linear thought process. This movie just puts people in places for things to happen, and who the f*** cares how it happens? Unless you see a real threat, I never want to know that I have any security. Oh, cool, now that Eddie's back in the sauce, he can return to not caring about anyone other than himself. Yippee, Bradley Cooper is attractive. Don't wear the same color suit, this isn't the Matrix. How dare you invoke her name? I sent over my revised projections. I didn't ask for your projections. But I did allow this one one-on-one -on -one meeting to take place, even though I'm legendary about guarding my time and privacy, and had already moved on from your services. Anyway, coffee? You, you need 12 to 18 months. I'll give you two million dollars if you can do it in six. I know it's a movie. A stupid movie about an asshole with a drug habit that keeps failing upward. But mother f this whole scene about drug development from this one f***ing lab guy. You're lucky somebody wiped the room. Just between us, we are there? The greatest criminal attorney in all of New York decides the best time to talk about the actuality of his client's guilt is right outside a busy police precinct. Also, by the way, this sh is never explained in the movie. Who was the girl? Did Eddie actually kill her? If not, who did? And also, if not, who went to the trouble of wiping the f***ing room down? You may get distracted by the pacing and the visuals in this movie, but if you were on NZT, you'd totally see it giving you both fingers. Carl Van Loon and Hank Atwood had no idea I might soon be charged with murder. Scab crackers dipped in a holiday ball movie. Quit telling me things I already know. Jesus, he looks frail. Could be an act. He's not even 60. We get it. He's an NZT user. We got it when you dropped hints about him coming out of nowhere as a big financial player. The fact that Super Cooper doesn't get it yet is kind of insulting to everyone's intelligence. You haven't been bored blind at the fundraisers. You haven't done the time in that first marriage to the girl with the right father. As I listen to Robert De Niro sleepwalk through this pedantic speech to Eddie, I can't help but think it's the mirror image and quality and fun of that final monologue Pacino gives to Keanu in the devil's advocate. Next week I'm gonna need 20 pills. Next week you can go f yourself. It always amuses me where and when PG-13 movies decide to drop their F-bombs. I mean, does this one do anything for anyone? Why couldn't Lindy be the one to tell him to f off after he almost got her killed? But there is very little on this earth that 40 million dollars can't solve. And tomorrow at 9, Atwood would sign the papers. Guaranteeing a large amount of money will be provided the next day when it totally will fall apart at the last minute in a movie cliche. Since when is this the Delphic Oracle? Uh, Delphic Oracle? You're getting him all the way to the Greeks for that roast. What's the matter? Did he Pythia you off? Greek references! Booyah! 
This lineup seems to indicate that Bradley is pushing 6'6", six, six. and yeah, in your bra. You know, between the two murders, the Russian loan shark gangster, the trench coat man, the European vacation, the banging of the landlord's wife, the backstory with Lindy, the time skips, the NZT development, the stock Atwood's decline, and the Van Loon conflict, there are clearly way too many threads to follow in what should be a relatively straightforward narrative. I mean, does anyone remember anything about this movie except the blue eyes, the pills, and the scene at the end where Eddie tells Van Loon off? We have no further comments at this time. Convenient shot of Atwood's attorney who also happened to steal the NZT from Eddie at the lineup is very convenient. We interrupt this limitless movie to bring you a very special presentation of Panic Room 2, Panic Harder. And so, here I am. Back at where you met me at the beginning of this movie, because when you want your movie to seem smarter than it actually is, you start at the ending or something. But we're instinctive creatures. We want to live. Wow, Eddie sure does value the sanctity of life and the will to survive against all odds. I mean, for himself. The innocent neighbor who was nonchalantly shot by the Russians a few minutes ago. F that guy. Wasn't this place supposed to be like a fortress? Like, it's taken the Russians a couple of minutes to get all the way to cutting the front door open. And are there no security guards? The hell did this 8.5 million go, man? You shoot it. It goes straight into the blood and brain. And apparently it was important to not only tell you this, but also show you. So I waited until now to give myself a dose. Only NZT could help me, and the last of it was in this thug's bloodstream. Oh. Good thing he drank that NZT blood, so he could have the brilliant idea of using a large object as a weapon. How else would he ever have thought of that? You know, considering this asshole's basically had Stormtrooper aim to begin with, shooting blindly really isn't the worst idea. The police would later note that my apartment's previous owner was an arms dealer. Of course they would. But he did not appreciate that Morris Brandt had kept the pills for himself. Ah, it was the lawyer who done it! But who the f*** cares, right? Do we really need another character to pretend to care about? We're seriously supposed to progressively root for this character when he's gone from looking like Jack from A Star Is Born to Sack from Wedding Crashers? I wish he'd come to me at first, Eddie. I could have bought Ivan at 33 a share. We could have been partners. This is essentially a villain exposits his plan at the end of the movie cliche, only stockier. You want to be president of the United States or brain dead? Why not both? I see everything, Carl. I'm 50 moves ahead of you and everybody else. Awesome. The good guy won? Well, with Hans on four. <laughs> 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 By the way, I've f***ed a lot of women over the last year or so. <laughs> I got Molly, I got her sister Sandra, I got Big Frank, I got birth control, I got Plan B, I got that morphine from China they took off the market. Don't know what I'm gonna do yet until I do it. Creativity is to allow yourself to make mistakes. Art is to know what mistakes to keep. This is the process. Oh my god! Oh god, I made her kill herself. You're sexy. What? You heard me. Come on, come on. Don't know how to fight. Or do I? <laughs> Guys, I know Kung Fu. So, the night he disappeared, any new thoughts about what you did? Not sure. Um, I had a shower and some sorbet. I think you're getting your dates mixed up. I'd come this close to having an impact on the world, and now the only thing I'd have an impact on was the sidewalk. Say, buddy, what takes 50 years to get up to the top floor and 30 seconds to get down? Wearing hood, sucker! I learned to play the piano in three days. He's my student! How's my mold? The thing of beauty. Where'd you get a suit? I f***ing made it, didn't I? This just came yeah, for you. Oh, what's in the box? I want some more.